Hi, welcome to Attainable Green. I'm Jess, and today we're going to be talking about some common problems you may encounter during the winter time when growing orchids. So here in Southern California, we have subtropical conditions, which means that it gets a little bit cooler and drier than most orchids would like. There are a couple of things that we have to do to make sure that our orchids stay healthy during the winter season. Now, depending on where you live and what you grow, you may have to do more or less than what I have to do to make sure that your plants stay healthy during the season. So here are my first few tips. So number one, sufficient lighting. You wanna make sure that your plants get enough light during the winter season. Um, in some places, you may have shorter day lengths and less light, and so you may have to supplement your sunlight with some grow lights. So I am moving a lot of my orchids towards the windowsill to get as much light as possible during the cooler winter season. Our shortest daylight hours have about uh, 10 hours or so of sunlight. And so I think that is just sufficient for the plants to do fine without any additional uh, supplemental lighting. My seedlings need more help during the winter season. So not only have I added a grow light for them, I've also added a seedling heat mat and that will just keep the temperature around the root zone higher. And I wanna maintain it around um, 60 to 65 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, if there's insufficient light, um, the plants may suffer. Some signs of insufficient lighting for your plants may be um, pale growths, um, very thin leaves, or etylated or stretched out growths. So if the plant is normally quite bushy and it starts to become kind of lanky, that may be a sign that the plants are not getting enough light. Second is disease. If your orchids are healthy going into the winter season, as long as they stay cool and relatively dry, then they will be fine as the temperatures dip. If the plant stays wet for too long and the temperatures are fairly cool, um, like lower than 60 degrees Fahrenheit, then you may encounter some diseases. Now, this is primarily because um, mold growth, bacterial growth, and fungal growth um, kind of thrive in these cold, wet conditions. Some symptoms of a disease problem would be poor growth on your plants, some yellowing leaves, um, some leaf spotting, and even just an overall decline of the plant. You may also notice there may be mold growing on top of the media, and that is a sign to check the plant and check the root system before any um, further damage may occur. With most diseases, it is beneficial to know if you're dealing with a bacterial, fungal, or a viral infection. That way you know the proper way to treat it. Um, Fizan 20 is great at handling most um, problems all around. And then if you need a fungicide, then, then Phyton 27 is a good fungicide as long as you don't apply it to dendrobium since they tend to be more sensitive to the copper elements in that fungicide. Also, some people would like to pour a little bit of hydrogen peroxide as a way to combat diseases as well. Um, when dealing with root rot issues, you wanna make sure you unpot the plant, remove the dead tissue. It really pays to watch your plants during the transition period between um, the temperatures slowing down and uh, watching your watering frequency. So as long as those are working in tandem, then you can keep your plants pretty healthy throughout the winter season. So the third thing to watch out for is pests. In any collection, there is a certain number of pests in your collection. Now, depending on how observant you are and your cultural conditions, um, these may be fairly easy to take care of or they can become more widespread. If you've grown your plants outdoors during the summer and you're moving them in um, for the winter season, just make sure that all your plants coming in are clean. Some people like to spray a preventative um, just to make sure that all the plants are clean before they enter your indoor space. Um, once they're inside in a closed area, um, pests can travel pretty quickly. Sometimes the indoor crowded conditions and uh, lower airflow can um, help pests proliferate. So some of the pests that you may encounter indoors could be mealybugs, scale, thrips, or spider mites. Those tend to be the most common ones that you may encounter and there are several ways to deal with them. The simplest way to treat any pest infestation is to wash the plant thoroughly. Um, after washing the plant, you can spot treat it with some rubbing alcohol on uh, mealybugs and scale. And for the rest of the um, treatments, you can use either a neem oil, insecticidal soap to apply to the leaves as a foliar spray as a um, natural insecticide. 
And if you have really persistent uh, pests, then you can also use commercial um, pesticides as well. I've had to use them as well every so often just because I'd like to start with the simplest solution first and then move up as um, it goes on. So those are a couple of problems that I've encountered um, growing orchids in the winter time. And hopefully you'll keep some of these tips in mind as well to avoid problems in the future. Well, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel, Attainable Green, to follow along on my orchid growing journey. I hope you all are doing well and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.